Hi students, welcome in chemistry classes. I am Priyanka Jain and you are watching the videos of analytical chemistry in English. Okay, so today's lecture is especially on the size exclusion chromatography. In today's lecture, we will see all about the size exclusion chromatography. This technique is also known as the gel permeation chromatography. Okay, in our last lectures, we have seen different type of chromatography techniques like HPLC technique, like gas chromatography, thin layer chromatography, paper chromatography. Okay, whatever you need, I have made the videos on that. Okay, so if you want to see that lectures, you can go to our playlist of the analytical chemistry or you can check the description box or you can see the links given in our cards. Okay. So see here, we are starting now the size exclusion chromatography. What is it? Actually, it is a form of the liquid chromatographic technique. It means our mobile phase is a liquid phase. Okay. And one important thing that you should know here is that the principle here is based on the size exclusion. Okay. We have seen when I have told you about the classification of the chromatographic techniques. I have told you that there are several principles on the basis of the techniques, maybe adsorption chromatography, like partition chromatography. Similarly, there is a technique size exclusion chromatography. You have seen in the adsorption chromatography, okay. When you have seen the adsorption chromatography, what happens in adsorption chromatography, there is a adsorbent filled here okay the stationary phase is an adsorbent that is filled in this column okay and the solute is being adsorbed okay the solute particles are getting adsorbed on the surface of this silica particle okay any other adsorbent may be present here that is like the stationary phase and on this stationary phase our mobile phase is getting adsorbed in the partition chromatography what is happening there are two liquid phases Okay, there is one liquid phase, another liquid phase. It means both the mobile phase and the stationary phase are liquid and our solute is being partitioned between them. Okay, there is a partitioning. But what happens in size exclusion chromatography? There is a separation based on the size of the solute particles. All the technique is based on the size of the solute particles. Okay, so what is happening here? the separation is done on a porous material. It means our stationary phase is a porous material. Okay. We are taking here a stationary phase of the porous material on which the separation is done based on the size of the solute. It means the solute's ability to enter in the pores of the columns packing. Suppose we have given a column like this. Okay. And there are the particles. There are the stationary phase like this in this stationary phase there are pores okay on this pores what is happening the solutes are entering in this pores okay these solutes can enter in this pores based on their size it means smaller solutes will spend proportionality more time within these pores as compared to the larger solutes and hence these smaller solutes will take longer time to elute from the column Okay, so in this way, the different type of the solute particles get separated on the basis of their size. Now see, there are two phases we know, as we know in the chromatography, there are two phases, stationary phase and the mobile phase. Stationary phase is there a porous material, okay. Any porous material is acting as the stationary phase. Actually, there are two types of the stationary phases that are being used. One is silica particles. The porous silica particles can be used as the stationary phase or secondly we can use cross-linked polymer. Actually these cross-linked polymers are generally the divinyl benzene. These are divinyl benzene cross-linked polystyrene resins. So the stationary phase may be either the silica particles or these may be cross-linked polymers. If we are taking the silica particles, their pore size will range. In this case, the pore size will range from 50 to 4000 angstrom. While in this case, when we are using cross-linked polymers, the size may range from 50 to 10 lakh angstrom. So this is the basic difference between the size of the two types of the resins that we are using. Secondly, see the mobile phase. 
here our mobile phase is the sample solution we are taking so solution of the sample in any of the liquid that is acting as the mobile phase the size selectivity of a particular packing is not infinite but is limited to a moderate range okay all solutes significantly smaller than the pore size will move through the entire column volume it means if we are taking this type of column suppose we are taking this type of column then the solute particles that are very small in the size okay here is the resin present okay and these are the different pores in this the pores are present okay but our smaller particles if we are putting here the smaller solute particles that will go through out the column very easily okay and they will get elute simultaneously they can easily pour through it okay and they will go to the elution okay and they will get elute so their retention volume is given by retention volume of the smaller solute particles that get elute simultaneously is given by vr is equal to vi plus v not here what is vi vi is the volume of the mobile phase occupying occupying the packing materials for it means whole the volume of the mobile phase that is present in the packing materials for will be called vi okay and what is v not v not is the volume of mobile phase in remainder of the column okay the maximum size for which this equation holds good is called the inclusion limit of the packing material now see what is the inclusion limit what is inclusion limit inclusion limit means size of smallest solute that can be separated from other solutes it means in our size exclusion chromatography the least size of the solute or the smallest size of the solute that can be separated from the other solutes that is called the inclusion limit this inclusion limit is also known as the permeation limit this is also known as the permeation limit it means the smallest size of the solute that can enters the packing material okay this is all about the small solutes but there are also large type of the solutes all the solutes that are too large to enter the pore will simultaneously elute with the retention volume vr is equal to v not this is for the largest solutes okay this is used for largest solute particles okay these are too large in the size to enter the pores so their volume the retention volume for them is given by v not there is one more limit that is called the exclusion limit what is exclusion limit exclusion limit is actually it is the size of largest solute that can be separated from the other solutes okay means to say the largest type of the solute particles that are not entering the pores okay so that can be separated from the other solutes is called the exclusion limit so in the size exclusion chromatography there are two limits of the size one is called the inclusion limit that is for the smallest size of the solute and one is exclusion limit that is for the largest size of the solute which cannot enter the pores okay so in between this inclusion limit and exclusion limit each solute will spend an amount of time in the pore space proportional to its size okay these solutes that are between these exclusion limits and this inclusion limits are spending the time these solutes spends time in the pores and that is directly proportional to their size it means larger size will spend more time in the pores while the smaller size will spend less time in the pores okay there is one more formula for it what is the formula vr is equal to v not plus dvi this is the formula for the solutes that are between this inclusion limit and exclusion limit here d d is what d is called the distribution ratio okay this distribution ratio ranges from 0 at exclusion limit to 1 at inclusion limit okay it means its value may be between 0 to 1 0 is for the exclusion limit 
एंड वन फॉर द इंक्लूजन लिमिट ओके सो बाय यूजिंग दीज फॉर्मूलास वी कैन फाइंड आउट द रिटेंशन वॉल्यूम ऑफ ईच ऑफ द सोल्यूट Now, what is the application of this whole chromatographic technique? See here. Actually, size exclusion chromatographic technique has a large number of applications. It can be used as a rapid means of separating larger molecules. Okay, this is used for separating larger molecules. Like we can separate polymers or we can separate bio molecules like carbohydrates. Actually, what we do? mixture containing a wide range of formula weights can be separated by joining together several columns in series we are taking several columns in series okay one by one we are connecting the columns and by this we can separate out different ranges of the formula weights another important application it is used for determination of formula weights for this what you have to do for this we have to just make a curve between the logarithm of formula weight okay on one side we are taking the logarithm of formula weight and on the another side we are taking the retention volume and we are taking a curve between them this curve is called the calibration curve okay because this is for the unknown solute and now when we are making this curve we can check it with the standard curve that is given to us in the laboratory okay so by matching them we can find out easily which solute is given to us okay so in this way we can find out the different types of the solute present in that sample okay and the retention volume actually this retention volume this depends upon the size okay this depends upon the size and the shape so if we are taking the perfect standards okay if we are taking the standards carefully then we can easily find out the formula weights for the given samples okay so this is whole about the size exclusion chromatography i hope you will like this video actually this video is sufficient for all of you okay this whole topic is just so and if you are liking these lectures please promote our channel please share these videos with some other students so that we can make more lectures and if you are liking videos please like them please comment me thank you